just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. Hey, welcome back to Coffee Time. Today, instead of covering a bunch of topics uh, that are usually they're just on my mind, today I'm going to cover a question that I got because it's come up time and again, and I'm sure even if you haven't got on comments and asked me the questions, you've wondered about it. Why Armenia? Why not Medellin? Isn't Medellin the popular place to go? Isn't that where all the cool kids go? So today I'm going to talk about Medellin versus Armenia. And if you're in Colombia, you pronounce the double L like a soft J, Medellin. If you're in Ecuador, you pronounce it Medellin. But we're in Colombia, so it's Medellin. Colombia, C-O-L-O-M-B-I-A. Don't forget. All right, first the similarities. The climate's about the same. The altitude's about the same. Temperatures run uh, generically, we'll say 80 to 60. You have a fairly equal access to shopping. Now, in Armenia itself, there's a number of malls. In Medellin, there's probably 12,000 malls. I don't know, there's a lot of malls. But keep in mind, Medellin is a large, spread out city. Armenia is tightly packed, but not far away, a handful of miles, maybe 15, 17 miles away, is Pareda, which is a city of twice the size. And there you have more shopping malls, larger. You've got a Price Mart, which is uh, the same as a Costco. And to take a bus from Armenia to Pereira, it's a really nice, smooth, fairly straight road, very modern. It's actually easier than going across town in Medellin. So the shopping and access to things, I think, are pretty similar, really. But similarities kind of end there, it really falls off. I mean, first of all, let's look at the population. Depending on what source you look at, Medellin is either the second or third largest city in Colombia. And Colombia, by the way, is the 26th largest country in the world. So some people have an idea that it's not very big because when you look on the map, it just kind of doesn't seem like it, especially when you look at Brazil next door. But Colombia is actually quite a big country. In Medellin, the actual metro area is about two and a half million people. But if you take into account the little suburbs around it that all sit right down into that basin circled by mountains, you're looking at almost four million people. Now what do we have in Armenia? Well, at best, it's about 300,000, including the little areas around it. Yeah, it's a very small city. A city nonetheless, and relatively modern, but by all means, no comparison in size. Armenia is a very walkable city. It's, it's almost built to walk where you wanna go. I can walk to anything I could possibly imagine, including El Centro, in 20 minutes or less. There's two malls within 10 minute walking distance of me. When it comes to walkability, Armenia has it all over Medellin because Medellin is huge. It's really spread out. To get from one thing to the next, it's quite a distance further complicated by the traffic and oh my god is the traffic horrendous in Medellin now I have to thank my friend David who is living in Medellin we met in Cuenca I met him a year or so ago when he freshly arrived in Cuenca and we've kept touch and we talk on a pretty regular basis he actually came to Armenia and we had a little visit he was checking the place out and so I hadn't been into Medellin in a number of years. I wanted to refresh my knowledge and kind of see how outdated was it. So I asked him to fill me in. What, you know, what's his impression? 
and everything that it was when I saw it last, it's probably more so now. Traffic being one of them. It is one of the worst traffic cities you can be in. And so that makes the walkability problematic. Add to that the nature of that basin, it, it, the amount of traffic, there's a lot of pollution. There's a fair amount of pollution in Medellin. You know, there's no way to sugarcoat that. In Armenia, yeah, we have traffic. I mean, how bad can it be considering the, you know, the population and the size? And on top of that, we have that phenomenon of the wind that I mention constantly. That's because it's constantly here. You always have this breeze. So even if there was some pollution, I mean, it just gets blown up into the mountains. It never feels polluted here at all. And they also use a lot of natural gas for their vehicles, buses, taxis, a lot of those use natural gas. So pollution is really a non-issue in Armenia, but it's quite a thing in Manizales. Cost of living, being such a large city that caters to tourists, Medellin is simply more expensive. Rents cost more, everything costs more. Armenia is a normal city. It's just the people that live here. You don't have big influx of gringos or Europeans. You have tourists because it's a very popular tourist area, but that's the coffee region, which includes Pereira, Manizales, Armenia, all the little towns like Falandia, Montenegro, the amusement park. So that's all in this area. So Armenia itself gets its occasional tourist, but not much. I mean, every day I go out, I go walking. I rarely see a tourist. It, let me rephrase that, a gringo tourist. Because, yeah, I mean, I can, it's easy to spot them. So there's a big difference there. And tourism in Medellin is really big. The downside to the tourism there is there's a lot of, I mean, let's face it, there's a lot of sex pants because it's known to be a city where you can go there and have women, have women and it's cheap. And I'm not going to speak to whether that's true or not true. I, it's really not the point of this video. But by the very nature of that reputation, you have a lot of people that come in for weekends, for a couple week vacation, men and women who are coming primarily for that purpose. You have others that just want to party, they want to go to the nightclubs because nightclub scene in Medellin is second to none. It's, it's really up there. You've got party in the streets. It's, it's a party city where Armenia is more of, they'll party on a Friday and Saturday night, but they gotta get to work. And so during the week, it's pretty quiet. I mean, you'll have your places like anywhere, but for the most part, it's fairly quiet and, you know, decent people are in before midnight. It's, it's a low key city, hence, Crime is not such a big deal here. I mean, who are they going to rob from? Their neighbors? Crime is really a minimal thing here in Armenia. It's so rare to hear anything about crime. Whereas in Medellin, it's actually a bit of a growing problem. Now, I wouldn't be afraid to live there. I wouldn't be afraid to go there. But it has been on the uptick. And they are now using this trixcopolamine, which originated in Bogota. It's been used a lot in Ecuador, and it's reared its ugly head in Medellin. And this is a powder that comes from a plant. Uh, those plants used to live around uh, my house in Hiron, Ecuador. And from this plant, you you can get this powder and you blow this powder in somebody's face and it's kind of like a zombie drug. It's a mind control duck drug. And people, you can actually die from this powder, but usually what happens is you kind of go into a, 
um, I'll say almost a trance, you'll take direction like, come on, we're going to go over to this ATM, pull all your money out and give it to me, and you go ahead and do it. It's uh, easy targets are people that are uh, frequenting prostitutes. Well, prostitution is legal in Colombia, like in most of South America, it's it still has its criminal uh, people in the background who will send those girls in and maybe they'll give you a dose of the escopamine and ransack your hotel room and take your laptop and your money and you wake up in the morning going, what the heck happened? It's kind of like the date drug used on men. So, well, it's not like you go there and there's a good chance you're going to run into that. But it is a bit on the rise and it is happening. So on any given weekend, it's probably going to, you're going to hear about it maybe once or twice. It's, it's easy to use certain caution and not uh, be part of it. Rentals. In Armenia, most places are built and intended to purchase. You can buy yourself a townhouse here for $70,000. They're inexpensive, they're, that's in a nice area. And that's the way it's intended. However, what happens, for example, the place I'm in, I'm renting it. But it has an owner. He lived here, he bought it. Then he moved because of his job, he's now living in Bogota. So he's renting out his place, but he owns it. He's got a mortgage on it. In Medellin, there's a huge number of places that are designed for short-term and long-term people. So it's easier, while you can do it in Armenia, it's easier because so many are intended to rent something for a month, two weeks, a month, six months. It's much simpler. It's more expensive. You're going to pay maybe double. It's m far easier to find a place there that comes furnished. Where in Armenia, not so much because, again, you know, what is the population here? It's people that live here. Well, they don't want to waste money on rented furniture, so they'll get furniture, which is what I did. So, Medellin versus Armenia. You know, what else? Well, you've got the cable car system that goes up uh, to the higher elevations. You've got a train that runs through the city. You've got the double bus, the mega bus system that's there. You got all that. In Armenia, we don't have any of that. You know, we've got the little mini buses and we've got taxis. Then again, what more do you need? You give me an hour, I can walk from end to end of Armenia. You walk for an hour in Medellin and you're just nibbling at the edges. So, yes, it's more modern. It's a world-class city in Medellin. It's a beautiful city. It's a great place to go and to visit. Everybody should see it. But I wouldn't necessarily want to live there. As a matter of fact, in my case, I absolutely don't want to live there. But those are the differences. It depends on what you want. If you like big cities, if you like all the extra modern things that are there, the museums, the theaters, and you're going to find it in Medellin. If you like that, if you don't mind a lot of crowds and a lot of traffic, then by all means, go for it. In Armenia, if you're a little more low-key, if you like a bit more country living, uh, because we're just kind of surrounded by it, it if you like things a little more peaceful, quiet. When you go out, maybe you go out for a drink or two, have some dinner, but you're not going out to get drunk and pick up girls, which I'm sure you can do that in Armenia. Trust me, I've been dating a little bit recently and I know that scene exists. However, that's not my scene and my dates don't go past 7 p.m. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of boring, so Armenia is perfect for me. Not that there isn't fun and excitement, but the things here are more, you know, I can go to local towns, I can go to the amusement park, I can go horseback riding. If you're into canoeing, white water rapiding, if you're into things like that, those are really close. 
thermales. You can go to the thermal springs. The things that are more interesting to me just surround Armenia. Those are the basic differences in why I live in Armenia versus I don't live in Medellin. Bottom line is, I'm just a boring person, so I live in a boring little town. See you at the next coffee time.